included in the proceedings of this portfolio committee. Lubabalo, please present the agenda of today. Uh, and before yes. that, uh, the meeting can only proceed once we have uh, three members. Oh, I see. Uh, no, sir. Answer. No. Present the agenda of today. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, sir. I've projected the today's uh, agenda is a talking of all committee reports, uh, quota one, two, and three, and oversight project. Projected is the uh, first report. First report. Either there's a problem with the signal. Hello, sir. Oh, Can you hear me? Yes, but we heard you. Honorable members, there's the agenda of today uh, presented. Do we have a mover for adoption? I move the adoption of the agenda, Chairperson Honorable Mpanza. Good morning. Thank Thank you, you. Honorable Mpanza. Thank you very much. Do we have a seconder? Lubabalo, if you can in the meantime mute that person. I don't know who's that person. Just mute that person. Do we have a seconder? Honorable Faber, you second it. Honorable Msani, how's Tembi? Have you muted that person? Luba? Hello, Chairman. Yes, I have. Chibasi. Is that person muted? Yes, Chairman. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll come back to this particular matter. Do we have apologies, Lubavalo? No, Chairman. I do not at this stage. Yes, honorable members, let me start by taking this opportunity in welcoming you to this meeting to congratulate. On behalf of the collective of the Portfolio Committee on International Relations and Cooperation, one of our members of this Portfolio Committee, who has now been elevated into the executive arm of the state, to now take the experience which she has accumulated from the legislative arm of the state into the executive arm of the state to become a deputy minister of public works. We all know that we have been working uh, with our, the queen of uh, our portfolio committee. Since we came here in 2019, I joined later and got to be integrated into the system of the portfolio committee on international uh, relations and uh, cooperation. So we want to salute the president, the collective that deemed it necessary and befitting, the collective of the African National Congress for taking a decision to look at our portfolio committee and among us taking a correct decision that uh, the queen of the portfolio committee must now be elevated to become a deputy minister. I had wished that she will join the meeting today at least uh, for the last time. I did call her and convey our congratulations to her for her deployment. Honorable Mpanza also on the other platform of this uh, parliament did convey the congratulatory uh, message on behalf of the collective of uh, this portfolio 
uh, committee. Uh, Honorable uh, Mpanza, where, where, when did uh, our esteemed member that we are talking about join the, the committee? Because I came later. Was it 2019 or she has been there before? Yes, uh, it was uh, on the 2019 the, uh, chairperson. But she started the term uh, with, with, with the committee and, and has yes. been a member since. Yeah. Yes. I want to also delegate the responsibility to you just, just to say something about that. Then we can, we can start the meeting for my. Thanks very much, uh, Chairperson, uh, for that uh, opportunity. Yes, of course, I want just to echo your sentiments uh, on behalf of um, <clears throat> the Portfolio Committee on International Relations and Cooperation. We, 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 are, we are very much honored uh, that uh, <clears throat> the president in his wisdom uh, could see uh, one of our members uh, to be a person that can be elevated, as we have correctly said, uh, to the uh, level of being a deputy minister of public works. And uh, it's it's not a small Anyana department. Uh, it's a, a huge department that has to do with the, deal with the issues of service delivery. Uh, she, she will be uh, solely missed in this committee. You know, as you call her the queen, uh, how um, articulate and uh, vigorous uh, she was uh, in expressing uh, her views. And she was doing that without fear in favor, but uh, she was um, <clears throat> helping us, all of us, chair, to play our robust oversight uh, responsibilities as a portfolio committee. So we hope uh, her replacement will be also equal to the task as she was, but uh, chair, I think uh, we will have to as a portfolio committee on in international relations led by your good self, I wish a, a success uh, in her future responsibility and also give her our unconditional and unwavering support uh, in the new responsibility that uh, she will be performing. So on behalf of the committee chairperson or, or the members, we uh, will wish ready to extend uh, our sincere gratitude and uh, wish you good luck uh, in the new responsibilities. Thank you very much, Chair Chairperson. Thank you very much. Honorable Lusani, on behalf of the EFF, anything? Honorable Faba, on behalf of the DA, anything to say? Or oh, Honorable, I don't know whether it should be Faba or uh, Berkman. On behalf of the DA? Uh, Jefferson, we only have three members. It's yourself, Honorable Banza. Yes, I know Honorable, I saw Honorable Faba on the platform. Yes, sir. He's no longer in the teaching now. He, he has locked out. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. So we only have, a, but it means we corrected because he was there in the meeting. Yes, sir. You, you corrected uh, to start the meeting. Sir. However, at the time of adoption, we need 50% plus one. Okay. okay. Now, as long as we corrected that, that is okay. Um, uh, thank you very much, Honorable Mpanza, for that uh, important uh, message for Comrade Bernice Swart, our, the queen of the portfolio committee. We wish her well. I have thought that other portfolio committee will, committees members will be here so that they can each one 
uh, say one or two things. Honorable members, today we are here to deal with the reports as indicated. As the now, I'm now going to give over to you to do the presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairperson and honorable members. Uh, Luba, can I be able to share the screen? You may share. Can continue, Chairperson, uh, I'm not getting anything from the presenter. I just see a report here, Chairperson. Um, there's some communication. You, from you can hear the presenter. No, Chairperson, and I've got full signal, so I, I don't know. Earlier on, we wanted you on behalf of the DA. Honorable Mpanza, on behalf of the ANC, has conveyed a congratulatory a message to Honorable Benny Swartz for elevation, do you want to say anything about that? Chairperson, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, Chairperson, I, I can just be, we, wish her the best in the uh, future. And um, from my side, as I say, on appointments, we will not, not this, this, this is not our place to speak about what we believe on appointments but for the honorable member we hope uh, all the best for the future thank you very much uh how's the you know it looks like you are not audible can you hear me how's the now luavalo can you check with how's the now what might be the problem on her side Oh, oh, okay. If, if, if she can proceed, proceed with the report yourself, uh, Lubaba. Oh, okay. And my request will be that uh, we focus more on the findings and the recommendations. Uh, oh, Chairperson, I, I, um, I was in load shedding, so... Um, my okay, apologies. okay, we can hear you now. So we, uh, okay, Chairperson. Um, Chairperson, I will, I will uh, start with the oversight report which the committee undertook an oversight uh, visit to three places, which is the uh, state protocol lounge in Deben at Kinshaka airport, and then to Midrand to the identified site for, for Pan-African parliament, and also to the diplomatic academy uh, in, 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 in the department in Pretoria. So, Chairperson, the with regard to um, the visit to to the state protocol, the committee uh, when it was there, the after the presentations, the observation was that uh, one of the concerns raised by members was whether the political principals uh, do visit the lounge to satisfy themselves that the processes which the lounge is meant for are actually optimal. And also uh, in terms of linkages between departments which are at the airport, whether the, 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 the department is experiencing uh, any challenges or there is cooperation between the, the stakeholders. The other thing was that the, what the committee observed was that the, the lounge was very far from the main airport and a, a recommendation was made that uh, perhaps uh, DECO should uh, consider finding alternative space in the main airport building. And uh, the other thing was that the lounge did not adequately reflect the image of South Africa. There were uh, certain items which were not uh, reflective when uh, members walked into the lounge. 
And uh, the other issue was that um, they, they, the, the members spoke about eligibility of people to access the lounge. And uh, they found that yeah. there, is a, there is a policy and therefore uh, members wanted to find out whether that policy could be expanded to, I mean, to be reviewed so that it can actually, you know, even expand so that it, 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 it gives more access to people who, who would want to, to have access to the lounge. And then the, the issue was um, vacancies. Vacancies, it, 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 it appeared that there were many vacancies at the lounge and the committee uh, raised concern with, with that and it was raised with the department. Uh, the committee also found out that uh, the lounge is rented from AXA Airports Company South Africa, and the committee wanted to find out how much the rental was and who is responsible for, for the management and maintenance of, of uh, the facility. Uh, it was also uh, felt that perhaps the upkeep of the facility should be the responsibility of AXA. And uh, because the lounge where it is, uh, it makes uh, Deben more favorable for VIPs to land there. So AXA would would would, uh, would be pro the, the one responsible for 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 the upkeep. And then uh, in terms of catering arrangements, members wanted to find more information of how catering is is is. Uh, it's carried out and then also the budgetary constraints facing uh, the department and how that trickled down to impact on the services of, of the lounge. And also the members wanted to find out how the lounge gets feedback from, from visitors there. And also the issues of parking, whether there the, the is enough space for parking and the fact that uh, environmental uh, laws, whether the, the lounge or the airport itself was actually taking uh, consideration of things like you know, air pollution and also the noise and everything else uh, related to jets that uh, land at, uh, at Durban. And then also the impact of load shedding whether you know how far that was impacting on the work of of the lounge um and there was also a concern that the department should not allow personal use so um chairperson the in terms of observations of the committee in midrand where the committee went to observe the site the committee was welcomed by uh, Public Works and, <clears throat> and DECO. And then uh, the committee raised the concern that uh, it, it, it is uh, expensive to, to, to rent at Gallagher Estate for the, for the Pan-African Parliament. Uh, and then uh, actually the a concern was also raised that uh, countries within PEP were already uh, making suggestions that uh, PEP should be moved elsewhere because South Africa is not is not uh, providing the headquarters as as undertaken in 2014. Now the issue of the wetlands, uh, it's it the committee found that it it's it is becoming a huge problem, and as a result, uh, the committee also suggested that perhaps the minister should engage the minister of finance and think about uh, and consider relocating DBSA so that a uh, PEP premises can, can be there and then also extend into the area without endangering the wetland and the, the butterflies. It was also uh, in, uh, reiterated by the committee that uh, the, the undertaking by South Africa 
uh, in terms of providing the headquarters and its obligations under the AU on this matter. Uh, perhaps uh, another option would be to, to find an alternative site so that this undertaking can be implemented. And then uh, the committee also undertook to return to, to Midrand so that they can assess whether the concerns they've raised would have been addressed. Then with regard to um, now in Pretoria, there were uh, presentations on responses of the department on BRRR. And on this one, uh, it was the chairperson uh, took time to uh, brief the department on the findings uh, of uh, the committee at Midrand and also at, uh, at um, Deben. And, and also highlighted the fact that the standard should be the same because the OR Tambo International Airport, uh, when members went on oversight, they, they, were, they, they were met with a, a certain standard which actually uh, talked to the image of South Africa. So all the state protocol lounges, they uh, suggest that, that they should be treated the same and they should look the same. Now, um, with regard to PAP, the committee again uh, presented their, their views and also their recommendations. And then uh, with regard to um, ICT and also vacancies, vacancies which uh, the department, both in missions and also at headquarters, were reported. So the committee also made uh, recommendations and concerns were raised around those areas. Now, with regard to consequence management and contracts and recruitment of the new CFO, the committee raised concerns with regard to the CFO to say uh, the committee had initially said it should be a chartered accountant. And the chairperson uh, actually asked the DG to defer the matter so that he can confirm with the, the DG can confirm with the minister while the chairperson will, will go back to Hansard because the minister had agreed that uh, the recommendation by the committee of a chartered accountant will be so. Now, with regards to um, the academy, the committee met with the academy and a presentation was done. So uh, the, the, the members were, were interested in the curriculum of, 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 of the, the academy and uh, also wanted more information in terms of what happens to uh, diplomats who uh, are involved in misconduct while abroad and also how the academy, I mean, the effectiveness of the training in their own assessment, and also uh, the fact that members would also like to benefit from training, uh, diplomatic training uh, uh, offered by, by the academy, and the fact that a recruitment of young people and women should be prioritized so that they can access the facility, I mean, uh, even the courses that are offered by, by the Diplomatic Academy. And uh, then the, it was raised whether, how the department is going to contribute, um, I mean, it's going to, you know, make an assessment of its contribution to society, given that South Africa is going to celebrate 30 years of democracy. And, um, and the fact that, uh, diplomats are, are, are sent abroad and some of them meet, uh, come across culture shock. So whether that, how they are prepared so that the department could, could explain more. So in terms of recommendations on this, uh, all these uh, findings by the committee in the three legs of the oversight. The first recommendation uh, uh, Chairperson uh, recommended is that the department should liaise with the Department of Works 
for a decisive line of action with regard to securing a suitable site for a provision of permanent headquarters for, for Pan African Parliament. The second proposal is that a minister should consider engaging the Minister of Finance about relocating a DBSA elsewhere and extending those promises to accommodate PAP without endangering wetlands and rare species of butterflies in that area, or else uh, find an alternative site to provide uh, a permanent headquarters for the PAP. The third recommendation, Chairperson, is that uh, the department and the minister should submit a report that indicates a clear picture with timeframes regarding processes underway towards fulfilling the hosting of PAP. Number four is for uh, the minister to motivate for a balance between career diplomats and politically appointed diplomats for a sustainable mix in, 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 for, in missions abroad. And the other one, the number five, is to ensure that suitable qualified accountants, including personnel accredited by the Institute of Chartered Accountants in near future or other means are recruited. And then the sixth recommendation is to the minister to consider sourcing an alternative office, office space in the main airport building for the state protocol lounge uh, at Kinshasa, Kinshaka International Airport. The number seven is to maintain acceptable and similar standards for all state protocol lounges uh, locally. And number eight is to engage public works as the lessee of the state protocol lounge in Deben to negotiate that uh, AXA pay rentals for land occupied by the state protocol. Nine is to review the 2021 state protocol lounge policy criteria uh, used for eligibility to access the facility, and also to determine whether it is still relevant to current circumstances and situations. Number 10 is to consider filling vacant positions for the state protocol and also uh, to avoid stuff you know, affecting staff morale and also low productivity. Number 11 is to consider offering a customized training for committee members on parliamentary diplomacy, because this is part of their work in furtherance of South Africa foreign policy. And then the last one is to consider reintroducing the cadet and internships problem, programs to facilitate opportunities for young people to us access the department. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, that's the report, honorable members. Do we have uh, any issues to raise or a mover uh, to adopt the report as a true reflection of what ensued? in that work of the portfolio committee. Hi, Chair, it's um, Sana here. Yes, uh, Austin B. Okay, I would like to make a recommendation that uh, where we state that the lease agreement can be put an amount so that it, it puts a clear picture why the committee is saying that the the, the lease is expensive. Because if we just leave it like that, um, it's taken for maybe a million or 500,000 or 700,000, where it's sitting at 3 million uh, per month. Uh, thanks, Chair. So with that amendment, you are suggesting that we adopt this report. With that amended, um, amended yes. chair, I think the report is, is fine. Okay. Any seconder? I second, chair. I've got very unstable connection, chair, but I second. Yes, it's all over. It's all over uh, the country now. This thing is getting worse. Thank you very much, honorable members.
the report is now adopted as a, a true reflection of the proceedings of our oversight. Over to you, Dino. Was well, Dino disappeared, Luba? Chairperson, Ch Honorable Father, excuse me. I I lost connection just like after 10 and I got back on, but I, I'm almost sure that my connection just got lost for a while, but I, I can't sometimes hear, I could hear the um, Honorable Member of the EFF just now and then. I, I can hardly hear you, and to be quite frank, I don't even hear Lobello at, this, Lobello at the moment at all. Yeah, it means there's a problem of network where you are, Honorable Father. Um, uh, Jay, listen, sorry, is experiencing, but I've got experiencing the same thing. Another one course is experiencing the same thing. Uh, I'm also having the same thing here in Matthew King. So we must just hold your own. Thank you, Chairperson. Now I am on um, the second report. The second report, which is on, on the first and the second quarter uh, performance reporting by the department. And uh, <clears throat> straight to the findings of the committee. The first finding is that uh, based on the regular reports by the department that the Republic of Cuba has not defaulted in its repayment of the loan it received from South Africa, it should be congratulated for its efforts to honor the terms of the agreement between South Africa and Cuba. And furthermore, uh, the, the emphasis on Africa in the work of the ARF excluding international cooperation is incorrect. Uh, relations with Cuba should continue to grow from strength to strength. Finding number two is that uh, South Africa has always taken a principled stand that is guided by its independent foreign policy. It deals with revolving, uh, revolving wealth and it will relate to anyone who serves its interests. And it was observed that the understanding of South Africa's non-aligned position was obscured. Uh, finding three, Chairperson, it was with re relation to the Constitution of South Africa 1996, not 66, um, provides that, uh, injustices of the past should be addressed and the lives of the previously marginalized improved. Uh, the interventions through the work of the department and its missions abroad should show how they, they assist to transform ownership and channel economic benefits to the needy. And also the people-centered oversight on foreign policy dictates that there be quantification and how and what percentages the investments, trade, tourism flows assist to address the injustices of the past. The st structured bilateral mechanisms should show how they assist the poor and the un unemployed. Economic diplomacy should be in the future be discussed to unpack how it qualitatively and quantitatively address the issues of the poor in the country. Finding four, uh, the, the, the committee noted that the department has not yet aligned its goals and objectives. Uh, the department had the chance to align its performance indicators to better measure performance. It was further noted that the department needs to look at how it will grow as an organization and put performance indicators that would measure growth. Uh, it, the DG was urged to relook at performance indicators and ensure that they are in line with SMART principles. It was also observed that some of the targets were things that are beyond the department in the ARF control, and some were not realistic. The committee rather sought indications of productivity and not quantities or on how many meetings were attended. Uh, finding five, it was uh, observed that low spending in all the programs were becoming a concern, a concerning trend uh, quarter after quarter. And then uh, despite that, the department had reported 100% achievement 
on planned targets. It was noted that uh, the delays, the delays in finalizing ICT processes and the ceiling on compensation up uh, uh, on compensation of uh, employees actually the the ICT cost delays uh, in 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 processing matters of you know other matters like the ceiling of uh, compensation of employees and the issue of vacancies at a senior level were also noted. And then a department should uh, say how it's going to address those issues. In five, uh, the committee noted that they need to have a special meeting on ICT and property matters, including the migration of ARF to, to SATPA. And then they requested that there should be progress on these issues on, uh, on a quarterly basis. Seven, more information was sought to see uh, turnaround strategies to address accommodation challenges for some heads of mission abroad. And then also how the department is going to address misconduct by some ambassadors. And also uh, a more trade should be um, should be uh, advanced with uh, the free world rather than uh, sanctions with rather than risk sanctions with the BRICS military exercises. Another concern was raised regarding a slow pace of granting slow pace of granting uh, heads of mission uh, credentials in South Africa. So, um, and then number nine, clarity was sought on the way uh, SBMs are assisting the country to achieve goals under the, the African continental free trade area, especially regarding the rules of origin to improve the economy. Um, it was also proved whether there is a link between the department and the Department of Trade and Industry. And uh, regarding harmonization of policies towards negotiating trade agreements and also for South Africa to accrue benefits from, from the, the, free, the continental free trade area. Number 10, a, a meeting, a recommendation was made by members that uh, there should be a, 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 a meeting in the future to actually unpack program two and, uh, and discuss the bilateral uh, mechanisms and outcomes of all these engagements which the department is undertaking so that the, 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 the committee is able to see whether they respond to national interest and also address the triple challenges. Information was sought in terms of uh, how South Africa was assisting victims of the recent earthquakes in, in Turkey and Syria. And uh, the joint naval exercises between the BRICS countries were welcomed and a need was identified for the committee to discuss and unpack alliances and recommend uh, accordingly. Twelve, it was noted that the committee had previously asked the department to, some more, to, to, to submit a report on multilateral positions held by South Africans. So um, that list is still needed so that the, the committee can see who, which organizations and what role these uh, this individuals are playing. 13, uh, the, the clarity was sought on why Cuba received a loan from the ARF through the ARF. And uh, the understanding was that AR funds should be used on, on the African continent only. And uh, the duration of the Cuba loan and how much has been repaid so far. In terms of recommendations on this uh, report, Chaperson, uh, the first recommendation is for the department, the minister to submit quarterly performance reports 
on how the work of the department admissions have quantitatively and qualitatively addressed the injustices of the past through economic diplomacy, trade and tourism interventions. The second recommendation is to prioritize the filling of vacant positions at headquarters and in missions abroad. Uh, the third one is to present a progress report uh, quarterly on modernization of ICT infrastructure project. The fourth one is to submit a list of all multilateral positions held by South Africans and their roles. And then uh, the, the fifth one is to submit a progress report quarterly on property management processes and on missions so far closed down. And the sixth one is to ensure that performance indicators are aligned to SMART principles and speak more to the business of the department and consular services rendered. A seven is to submit a quarterly progress report on the processes towards the migration of the ARF to SATPA. Eight, submit a report on a turnaround strategy to address the trend of Unspending, underspending in the department and missions abroad to avoid audit queries. Nine, ensure that the ARF achieves all its set targets in furtherance of South Africa's national interest. 10, ensure the interactions with the Biden administration advocate for the re renewal of AGOA. And, and 11, continue to, uh, to pursue the agenda of the reform of the UN Security Council in line with the common African position espoused in the Isoluni consensus. 12, continue providing humanitarian assistance to Cuba, Palestine, and Western Sahara in line with South Africa's foreign policy prescript. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you very much. Uh, how's the now? Honorable members, the report has been presented. Any matter to raise? Chair. Chair. Um, under the recommendations, if uh, Sistino can just move to there. Um, there is a recommendation that says uh, ensure the interactions with the Biden us um, discussing that or bringing it up to on the committee. Okay, we'll come back to that. Honorable Faba. No, it was Honorable Bergman. Okay, um, Bergman. Oh, you are here now. Okay, no, Honorable Bergman. <laughs> Chair, sure, thanks. Um, I think the DA is going to um, reserve its response on this report. Uh, I must say there's a lot of sentiments in this report that we do not agree to. And it's, it's actually an indication of this, with the direction of this committee where it's going itself. Um, there seems to be a movement, and the Deputy Minister is guilty of it himself, that... Uh, you take, you know, you take the last four responses at the of my questions, um, for example, Chair. Um, the Deputy Minister seems to then take his opportunity at the end of the meeting, whereby there's no there's no opportunity to question that afterwards. Where he will then, if I'm talking about carrots, he'll answer in bananas, so to speak. And that, that, that seems to be what's in, entered into this report. So, you know, um, for example, let's say I was talking about the CFO and the the creator, the potential for creative accounting, let's say in the last meeting. Um, and then he can quite easily then just take that opportunity to say that we're accusing Durko of creative accounting, which is exactly not what was mentioned. Unfortunately, then the report seems to take on a tinge of, of what the deputy minister says and not actually what was um, captured by what my question 
seem to have um, asked. Um, it's almost like yesterday, the same thing took place. The NFP puts in a motion uh, to to downgrade the embassy. If But if we actually took an oversight visit to that region, you'd note that the embassy was already downgraded. Now, had we been led, um, you know, we would have realized that that whole motion in its effect was actually, Israel doesn't even get to hear about the motion. It becomes a political hot potato for the NFP, which will now score maybe one or two points in his community. But the economic downfall actually bears down on this committee because we suffer economically because this could be a trade uh, concern to the, you know, this could become a trade um, issue now between two countries or technologically. So had we been guided through leadership, the motion would never have carried because it was the, the, the embassy has already been downgraded for all intents and purposes. Now, these sort of things in this report are captured. It's not, and it's no reflection on the administration because the administration are, are capturing exactly what's discussed in this committee. But it's up to the minister and the deputy ministers to lead us. And in all, in, you know, instead, what's happening is we're actually being misled. So I think we're going to have to, from the DA side, we're going to have to reserve our rights on this report. Thanks, Chair. Okay, that is noted. There is no problem. Uh, I don't see any other hand here. Uh, that was the nail. Biden administration. No, uh, Oh, I didn't see your hand. Can't so raise my hand. Okay. Yeah. No, I just want. I just want to add, Chair, that in five point one, we must reflect that. We must continuously monitor the court case between DECO and AfriForum. Okay, yes. How's the note? Do you want to clarify the how we've captured the that point which was raised by Honorable Musan? Yeah, yes, Chaperson. It was um I I ref let me resume sharing. Um, uh, this the, the, the report itself, uh, when members were, when the presentations were done by the department in terms of what they have achieved in all the, the, the in all the programs under program two, it was highlighted that in their meetings with the US, as a, a number of issues were raised by Minister Pando with uh, his counter, with her counterpart. And AGOA, the renewal of AGOA was one of them. So uh, it was raised in that meeting that uh, support from the, you know, maybe through parliamentary diplomacy, support should, from South Africa should continue, I mean, a, a request for support for the renewal of AGOA should continue. So we put it there because it was highlighted by the department. Yes, that's in, in uh, that's indeed the case. Do we have a mover for adoption of the report with uh, the okay. with the reservations of Honorable Bergman, Honorable Musan? Chair, as the EFF would have to reject this report because it cannot be, as a committee, we've raised it so many times that we need to be taken on board with what the ministers are going abroad and, and signing as MOUs and get an understanding. So if it's going to appear in our reports on what they agree on, and you know that when this department um, takes us uh, through these reports. It's just a high level um, presentation, which is not detailed on what was agreed by ministers and their uh, colleagues in, in, in other international uh, foreign ministries. So, Chair, please note the objection of the EFF. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Honorable Masane. That is uh, noted. Honorable Mpanza. Thanks, uh, Chairperson. Uh, but uh, I wanted to move for the adoption, but I want to just uh, clarify something on Masad because, uh, <clears throat> like the point that uh, the Honorable Msani is raising, uh, I I think I, I would agree with her that that's that's what that was the sentiment uh, of the committee. But I think we could not do that retrospectively, Chairperson. Uh, so maybe my 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 appeal would be to say yes because we're dealing with this report uh, in a particular quarter, and 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 uh, that has not been a uh, factor that maybe uh, in the, when we're dealing with the, the second or the other quarter, then that should also uh, be taken into account. But uh, as it stands now, Chair, I think we, we can't uh, then say because it was not captured there. And, and then as a result, uh, the report is not a true reflection of what was discussed uh, because the point that she's raising, uh, it's there, but it could not be done now. So with that chair, I wanted to move for the adoption of the agenda uh, with uh, what uh, Honorable Ngozi has added and uh, those uh, point of uh, reservations and the rejection uh, by the <clears throat> other honorable members. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Mbanza. Honorable Nkosi had moved, so you're actually seconding him. Um, so the report is now adopted, uh, and we take note of what Honorable Msani and Honorable Bachman have raised in the committee regarding its content and perspective. Last report, how's the now? The last report Chairperson, is on quarter three performance. And um, the first finding by the committee was a, a sentiment that the political work of the department showed notable progress and also a, a lot of work had been done in different regions. Uh, there was a sense of stability and improvement and uh, the, the department was, however, encouraged to uh, focus more on operational matters. The finding number two, the, the committee raised the concern that uh, they have noted that through quarter one to three, there has been a trend of low spending under the five programs for different reasons. And they found it to be a creating contrary factor to the fact that the department has uh, always complained about budget constraints. And uh, the, the department was warned that underspending was considered a serious problem, which is impacting on service delivery. And also that uh, consequence management should be implemented on whoever is responsible for incidents of low, lower spending. Number three, um, it was a, a, an observation was made that in order to address maintenance backlog, a condition assessment exercise has been commissioned uh, for 17 properties in the missions. The committee noted that uh, the department has actually uh, done condition assessment exercises in those missions. And also that uh, that condition assessment uh, exercise will inform how the department is going to prioritize projects for renovation maintenance in the next financial year. This was reported. And then number four, the committee noted that a number of state owned properties were identified for disposal in Namibia, Funchal, Blantyre, Bonn, Banjul, Paris, Milan, and Zurich. And it was also reported that the disposal committee has approved that they be advertised. 
Number five is uh, uh, in order for the committee noted that in order to mitigate the slow spending on capital projects, uh, head office officials have been deployed in missions with major capital projects to oversee the works of the appointed service providers. Six, a concern was raised that during its virtual oversight to South African missions abroad uh, in March of 2021, the committee noted a number of dilapidated state-owned uh, properties at missions in Africa. It was now surprising that the presented list of properties to be prioritized for maintenance and renovations, Africa had a few that were identified. And then seven, a cautionary statement was made that hopefully the department will not turn around in the future with a need to have state-owned properties in the areas that is aiming to dispose of already existing uh, properties. And then uh, eight, the, it was noted that the receivable from Cuba is payable by annually in June and December. And the Dece December payment was received as per the agreement. And uh, this is the loan agreement provided for under the economic assistance package agreement signed uh, in February of 2012. Nine, a comment was made whether South Africa and Cuba were practicing a trade of accounting in that a donation was earmarked for Cuba while it is repaying a loan. 10, um, the South-South formation emphasized the importance of global solidarity and cooperation in the fight against food, fuel, and finance crisis as well as eliminating their consequences. The formation, it was also noted that the formation called for the timely implementation of internationally agreed goals and frameworks such as Agenda 2030 and Paris Agreement as a way out of this crisis. And then in terms of recommendations, uh, Chairperson in that quarter, uh, it, it's recommended that uh, the minister align the disposal of state-owned properties abroad with the provisions of Foreign Service Act in order to achieve uh, the best functional, financial, economic, and social return or benefit from the disposal of removable assets. Two, prioritize the state-owned properties admissions in Africa for maintenance and renovations. Uh, the image of South Africa in the continent should be protected. Uh, three, ensure that head of office officials deployed in missions with major capital projects to oversee the works of the appointed service providers have the requisite knowledge and experience in the built environment and project management. And then four, inter intensify global solidarity and cooperation with the global South in the fight against food, fuel, and finance crisis, as well as eliminating their consequences and then report quarterly. Uh, five, continue to deepen solidarity with Cuba and continue to implement the agreement on economic assistance package with Cuba in line with the provisions of the PFMA. Uh, that is it, Chairperson. Thank you. Am I audible? Thank you, Austin. Yes. yes, you are audible, Chairperson. Thank, Thank you. Austin. Yes, Mafia Network is not one of the best in the country. Thank you very much, honorable members. Is there a, a some comment on the report. I don't see any hand. Can we have a mover for adoption of the report as a true reflection? I move, sir. Thank you, Honorable Nkosi. Do we have a second?
Do we have a second, honorable members? Yes, Chair President, I second it. Okay, thank you very much, Mam Zungu. Okay. The report is now adopted as a true reflection of the proceedings of the Portfolio Committee on holding the department accountable on the fourth quarter. Do we have any announcements, uh, Lubabalo? I'm specifically saying you because you are arranging the trip. Okay, we don't seem to have Lubabalo on the line. Honorable members, we want to thank you for participating in this uh, meeting to adopt the reports. We also want to thank the staff for the efforts they put in making sure that we have uh, the reports that are adopted with the necessary amendments and notings which have been made in the portfolio committee. We thank South Africans who have invested their time in making sure that they follow the proceedings of this portfolio committee on international relations and cooperation today. We look forward to continue to work with South Africans who have interests in matters of international relations. Once more, as the portfolio committee, we congratulate one of our members uh, for having been person? elevated into the executive. The meeting is now officially closed on our members. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.